Hi everybody, Dr. Emily here from the Evidence-Based Fitness Academy. I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about the difference between a high gear push-off and a low gear push-off and why it's so important with your clients and your athletes. Now I recently presented on this topic with Dr. Mike Martino at the NSCA National Conference and it was something that was new but also very powerful to add with your clients and athletes. So again, two different ways that we can push off. First one is a high gear push-off. High gear push off is when you are about to push off and you are in that sandal plane. So you can see that I'm going straight through my big toe joint or the first MPJ. I'm getting maximum first MPJ dorsiflexion, which means I am going to activate the windlass mechanism and I'm also in a position that I'm going to maximally lock the foot for push off. Now, the faster you can lock the foot and the harder you can lock the foot, the more power and force you can put through the foot. So this would be a power position versus a low gear push off, which would be a compensated push off position. You can see that I'm not going through my big toe joint to the first MPJ, I'm actually going around the first MPJ, which means that you're not activating the windless mechanism, you are not locking the foot, you actually are in an unstable position for push off. If the foot is unlocked and unstable during push-off, you actually do not get maximum force output, you increase your risk of injury, and you decrease your performance. Now you can feel this, and I encourage you to have your clients and your athletes feel it as well, so that they begin to appreciate the difference between push-off here versus push-off here. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start in a position here, so kind of that power position. And I want you to first do a low gear push off. So you're going to kind of oblique that foot. This is very common. You probably see this with some of the lunges that your clients are doing. I want you to be here and then you're just going to push off. And I want you to have a sense of how much power you're able to put out. So again, you're in that low gear push off position and then you're going to push off the back leg. Now that is as opposed to a high gear push off. If you get into that high gear push off and you're really on that big toe, you get optimal first MPJ dorsiflexion, you already can feel that you have more power in your foot. You can feel that your foot is a rigid lever now and it translates all the way up the back leg into that hip. You're here, push off. Right, so again, you can get that sense here, really push off. You also wanna push the big toe down into the ground. When you do that, you kick in your flexors, which is part of the deep front line and it goes into the core or the pelvic floor. Push off. Right, so again, you can start to get an appreciation for a high gear versus low gear push off. Now, why are some of your, your athletes, your clients doing a low gear push off and not getting quite to that high gear push off? Well, you'll just have to stay tuned for another video or you'll have to check out one of our certification programs, which are offered throughout the world every month. Check out www.ebfafitness.com and always remember, stay barefoot strong.